Here's the example from the last video. We saw that all of these variables go on the stack, and thus they are immune to GC collect because GC collect is a garbage collection thing which only operates on the heap. And furthermore, since these things are value types, because we now define them as structs, then it doesn't make sense to assign them null. So I'm going to get rid of all the heap related uh, material there. And, and I don't need to run this code again. I ran in the last video. But what I want to do now is put the instantiation of one of these objects, one of these counting classes, inside of a method that we will call recursively. Ooh, don't let recursion scare you. Don't, don't stress it. But I want to put it inside a method that I'll call recursively. Uh, and we can see that these values will still go on the stack. And we'll also see some of the beauty of recursion. So let me uh, control L all of that. And I'm just going to say var C. And then let's do static void recurse int I like so. And all I'm going to do is move the instantiation of this C object. Maybe it will make you feel better if I uh, explicitly name the type like so. Oops. Control Z. But let me move that line of code down. Control L to cut it, Control V to paste it. And then as a pure recursive function here, we have to do something simple. If I is equal to zero, then return. Otherwise, let's just keep going. Recurse again, I minus one. This is a typical computer science example of recursion. It's a toy way of recursing. You've probably seen the Fibonacci sequence or maybe factorial defined this way. And that's nice, but how often are you going to need to do a Fibonacci sequence? And then why would you ever do factorial using recursion? It's too expensive. Use a loop. Anyway, recursion is beautiful for traversing tree data structures. All right. So even though these nice examples, yeah, they make sense. They're kind of easy to grasp. Don't think that recursion is all about this. It's, go recurse a tree. Okay, that's that's where recursion really gets beautiful. And the only reason I'm making this a method is simply to show you that we are going to instantiate the data inside of this method. Now, don't let that burn your brain too much. In, in computer science, we always think about instantiating objects. But every time you call a method, you are instantiating that method. And what does that mean? You are allocating room for its local variables on the stack. Okay, this is, yes, it's a parameter, but it goes on the stack. And, and this is a local variable. They're both local to recurse, meaning when I'm inside recurse, I can access C and I can access I, but I can't access it out here or up here. It's only local within here. But furthermore, it's only local to that instance of recurse. All right, that's, uh, don't let it burn your brain up too much. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to hit F11 here. And, oh, we actually got to call our recursive method. Go figure. Recurse. Let's just put a 3 here. F11. I'm going to step into recurse by hitting F11. And I know our stack pointer is pointing to the area where our stack is located, roughly. It's, the stack pointer technically points to the top of the stack. Um, but if you really want to get nitty-gritty details, go watch my assembly programming playlist. I copied that value here. I'm going to paste it here and hit Enter. And I'm going to actually... Scroll that down towards the bottom, and I'll just mark it right here. I guess I'm on green. So you can see the address here, 687EAA4, 687EAA, and I've covered the 4. All right, pay attention over here. Okay, somewhere in here, as we create C, we will see that C object take up room in here somewhere. And... Remember this counting class object we created. The first instance will have an ID of 0. I'll scroll back up. You see the ID here. It will be 0. And the char portion of that will be an A. Right? So I'm just going to hit F10 here. Keep your eye over here. F10. Do you see a 0 and an A somewhere hiding in here? Well, hopefully it's pretty obvious that... Hey, look at that. There's a 0. And here is an A. You can see the Unicode representation right there. So that is where our C is. Okay, now let me hover over I. I is 3. Okay, do you see a 3 anywhere close to here? If you look on the very next line, there you go. That is our I. Remember, I is an int. It takes up 4 bytes. So I'm actually going to highlight or outline... C and I right here, and I'm going to label them. I'm going to say this is I, 
And this is C. Let's keep going. We check and say, is I zero? No, it's not zero. So recurse again. All right? I minus one. So now I will be two. But watch over here. See if you see a two show up here. Let me hit F11. Do you see a two anywhere in here? Look at that. There is our two. And then this this stuff right here, I'm not going to explain. It's just data. It's on the stack. It's allocated to keep track of where our functions are and that kind of thing. Go watch the assembly programming playlist if you really are dying to know what's going on there. Okay, now we're going to create another C, but but this instance, instead of having zero for an ID and A for the letter right there, we will instead get B and one, an ID of one and the letter B. Let me hit F10. Do you see a B or a one in here anywhere? Oh, look right there. Here's our B. Okay, this is our B right there. And here's our one. And furthermore, here is our I. Okay, our I right there. Let me choose a different color. Let's do, let's do red. All right, I'll highlight this in red. Hopefully I can highlight it straighter than that. Let me do red like so. And I'll mark it again. I'll say this is the C portion. This is the I portion like that. Look at that. We've created another instance of our method. Okay, did I not say earlier in this video that every time we call a method we we allocate room for all these local variables on the stack, which we're seeing right here. Here's the previous instantiation right there, and then here's the next instantiation, like so. That is pretty cool. All right, that's go, go tell your coworkers or your classmates that every time you call a function, you instantiate it and watch their jaws drop, see what they say. Uh, let's do it again. All right, I is not yet zero. It should be a one, is it? It's a oh, it's a two. Yeah, that's right. We started. We started at three, so we got it. We're going to go a little further. Recurse i minus one. All right, now i is down to one. Let's again. Let's create another instance of counting class. We did a. We did B. We should see a C show up somewhere. F10. Look at that. There is our C. And what do you know? Here's our I again. So we've instantiated it yet once more. Let me. I'm running out of colors here, but I want to highlight this. Here is our next instantiation of the recurse method. And I said earlier in this video that right now we only have access to this I and this C. Okay, this. I and this C. We can't access this C or this I, nor this C or this I. That's why we call these local variables. They're local to the scope of the method. And as long as we're inside that scope of the method for that instantiation or call is a better term for it, for that call of that method, then we can access that data. But but right now we can't access these even though yes they're still on the stack. Alright. One last time. Is if i is equal to zero, well, i is not yet zero. Is it zero? Come on. I is one. That's what I thought. So it's not zero. So let's recurse again. Same thing here. But before I hit F10, any idea where it's going to show up in here? Okay, you can kind of see the pattern. We have we have four bytes right or eight bytes right there, and then we have eight bytes right here. We have eight bytes right there. And look, you can already see the i right here. So C will end up. Right here, let me F10 over this. And there you go. Our ID is 3, and our letter is D. So we have A, B, C, D. Let me hope we have another color. I got black. I've tried yellow, but yellow doesn't work very well. So let's do this. Grab this right here, like so. And we've instantiated our method again. All right, here's I, and here is C. All right now, I is zero. Hover over I, I is zero. And when I hover over values like this, and it says, "Hey, I is zero, that's really the debugger being nice and abstracting us away and saying, "Hey, I know it's just this. What they're looking for is this piece of RAM right here. I better show it to them." Okay. And so that's that's the I we're looking at right now. This I. And if I further hover over C, do I get anything? No, I don't get anything. I could put it in a watch window and look at it. Anyway, I is zero. Return. Go back. So now when we return, we're going to abandon or ditch this data out here. All right? Notice, does anything change out here when I hit F11? F11, nothing changed. Okay, but now let me hover over I. I is 2. 
All right, it looks like I hit F11 too many times. I is two right now, which means I actually abandoned this data and this data. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to hit F11 again. F11, I is three, all right? Notice we're just returning from all these recurse calls. I is now three, which means we've abandoned this data here as well. Notice we didn't change it as we unwind the stack. We just leave it there. Okay, we'll do something differently with it next time we call functions or methods. Uh, but right now, we're, we're sitting in this stack frame is what this is called right here. This is called a stack frame. I'll explain that a little bit more in a future video. But let me hover over I. I is 3. So we're seeing this I right here, that instance. And I'm going to hit F11. And we're back up here in main. We've just abandoned all this data. You notice the LIFO. Well, let me write it right here. LIFO uh, way of, of pushing data onto the stack and then popping it off. Last guy in. All right, this was the last guy in, and then he was the first guy out. And then this was the next guy out, and this was the next guy out, and this was the next guy out. Anyway, that is a stack. GC collect, no hope. I am stuck with pushing these values onto the stack and then popping them off. And now you know what I mean when I say you're instantiating a method every time you invoke that method.